appreciate the Lord for this wonderful opportunity to be in his presence. Let's give him glory. Is the reason for our gathering. Let's worship the name of the Lord. Let's honor him. Let's give him glory. Our God is good. Our God is wonderful. Our God is excellent. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. He's a faithful God. He's a wonderful God. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Mama yekete na bozungu roba ha chenga ngadingere bozoko roba. Mekupa a ike engede bozungu roba hanga chandra ba 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 ba. Enga ba a inga anga da bozoko roba. Me indra masaka ba. Let's worship the Lord. Let's bless His holy name. Our God is good. Our God is wonderful. Our God is faithful. Let's bless His holy name. Ira boche kalaba. Me mama kasa andra ba halinge shenge de bobo. Uma kasharaba. Inde da masakolo ba. Mindinga sharaba. Okonde ma aike zinde. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give Him glory. Let's adore Him. He's faithful. He's wonderful. He's excellent. He's holy. Let's honor the name of the Lord. Mama kasharaba. Inde masakala. Mahai keshendebo, rende ba keshendebo kora ba sakaba, enge de bo zungu raba, ha inde ba kasharaba, ka inda ma a inga hanga salaba. We worship you, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord of Lords. Rambo kasa kala baba, nende mama baba, shendra baba, inde ma kasa kaba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Anytime I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Anytime I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, oh Lord. Anytime I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Anytime I see another breaking of the day. Said thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Any time I see another breaking of the day, I said thank you. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the grace you have given unto us to see this new day. Mama se kalaba shekeda. Yende maso kolaba kashanga daba haike shekeda ba. Me kapo okura ba senge de mahanga shekeda bo. Indora mahaike inge de bo sokura baba. Anga dinge shende bo. We worship you. Bakora kasaka baba. Enge nena hala kandra baba ba sendro bo koko bo bo. Enga bo okura ba kashanga da hainge zeke bo. Kandro bo bo zundro ama hainga danga shende bo bo. Kendra bo 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 bo. Ya kashara ba. Enge nena bo bo sende ma hala kandra ba sheke de bo. Engo ba kasenda ma hai de bo bo yeke da. Thank you Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We give you glory. Take over, Lord. Take over, Lord. 
We welcome you once again into this meeting. You are here already. Father, take over. Holy Spirit, take over. Surrender my spirit, soul, and body unto your control. I pray, Lord, use me as an instrument of blessing, even to your people this hour, Lord. Holy Spirit, take over. Take over me. Take over this service, Lord. And at the end, let your name alone be glorified. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. And let the church of God say louder, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can please have your seat. We want to appreciate the Almighty God for this great privilege to be here this morning. I want to thank our beloved prophet for this wonderful opportunity to be able to be part of this great meeting. I want to thank God for men and women of God, our fathers in faith that are here. I pray the Almighty God will continue to bless every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm believing that God is going to do something unique, something great in our lives as a result of this Congress in the mighty name of Jesus. One thing I know, whenever God wants to bless an individual, one way or the other, he lay a burden, the burden in the heart of the leadership to put a program together just because of an individual. And I believe that person is here today. And your portion and your inheritance in this Congress will not elude you in Jesus' name. And that which God wants you to know, to have a counter with, will be released unto you in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for our beloved sister that was on the podium when I came. God bless you, ma. I'm tremendously blessed through your ministration. I pray for more grace, more anointing upon your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, the topic I'm asked to discuss with us, he said, this is the time to pray and fast for global revival and revolution. It is time to pray and fast for global revival and revolution. I want us to read a, pas a passage of the scriptures. I want us to turn our Bible to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2. I will read from verse 15. This is going to be the summary of what we want to read from verse 15 to 28. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. And those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. And the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. And give not thy inheritance to reproach. That the Eden should not rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the hidden, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. And we drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face towards the east sea, and his hinder part towards the uttermost sea, and his thing shall come up, and his ill favor, his savour shall come up, because he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. 
Be not afraid, ye beasts of the feet, for the pastor of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the wine do ye their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and it is caused to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the year that the locust has eaten, the cankerwood and the caterpillar, and the palmerwood, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And, my, and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dream, your young men shall see vision. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. The church of God will not be put to shame. It is time to pray and fast for global revival and revolution. We will see that passage we have read. That this issue of fasting and prayer involves everybody. Both the pastor and the members from the altar to everybody that's a call for prayer and for revival i believe god will help us in jesus name it is time to pray what time are we brothers and sisters i was going through the book of a man of god recently he said there are in the spiritual realm there are three different times he said my time your time the time my time your time the time jesus christ was saying say, my time is not your time i have my own time you have your own time but that's what the time the time we are the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, it said, to every season, there is what? There is a time. There is a time. There is a time. I, my prayer is that we not mix our own timing in God's calendar. God has time for everything. He has time for everything. He said, to everything there is what? A season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. When we look at the time we are, that we said, in the last days, perilous time shall what? Shall come. You will agree with me that now we are in what? Perilous what? Perilous time. When you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1, to five, test us some of the things that this our time is all about. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall what shall come. We are in the last days, we are in what perilous what times. He said, For men shall be lover of their own self, conversious, boaster, proud, blasphemer, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unruly, without natural affection, truth breaker, false accuser, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those things that are good, traitor, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers what? of God. You see, having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. That is describing our times. 
The time we are is the perilous time. It's also the latter times or the latter day. When you look at the same say, first, first Timothy chapter 4, tells us about the time we are. If you read from verse 1, now the spirit seeketh expressly that in the latter time shall that in a lot of times, some shall depart from what? From faith. Giving heed to what? Seducing what? Spirit. And doctrine of what? Of the devil. Speaking lie in what? Hypocrisy. Having conscience near with hot iron. These are things we are seeing in our days. You will agree with me when we look at the sum total of our days, there is need for revival. A lot are happening today in the world, in the Christendom. We are having gay bishop now. Recently, the head of Roman Catholic said they can even bless a gay person. A lot are happening. Even in the church, a lot are happening. I have a story of a pastor having an affair with his daughter. In the church, Otters are being polluted. A lot of things are happening. There is need for revival. This is the time. This is what? The time. The Bible talk about this time. Say, this time say, iniquity shall what? Shall have banned. He said, the love of many shall what? Shall was cold. Matthew 24 verse 12. That is the time. That is the time. It is time for us to pray. And fast for what? For revival. You will agree with me because of the need of our time, there is need for what? For revival. What is revival? It's reawakening, bringing back to life what has been dead, what has been stagnant. That is revival. Revival is the quickly of God's people for their true nature and purpose. Quickly of what? God's people for their true what? For their true purpose and nature. Revival. What is revival? It's a spiritual awakening after a state of being dormant and stagnant. That is revival. We need to go back to the, to the origin. Revival. Revival is an extraordinary movement of the Holy Spirit producing extra resort. That is revival. When the Spirit of God takes over and we become, a, we become a spectators. Revival. Revival can also be a time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Acts 3 verse 19. We need revival. Many of us have witnessed one revival or the other. Thank God the church are multiplying. But the multiplication of the church is not really affecting the society positively. Now, something is wrong. Something is wrong. There needs for a revival. We need to check our belief system. We need to check the way we do things. God has not changed. It is we who have changed. We need revival. This topic talk about revival and revolution. It's a revolution that is even a big word. Revolution talks about overturn, a drastic change, a sudden change. We need it in the world today and in the church. And for this to happen, we have to pray, we have to fast. In the days of the disciple, when they saw them, say, 
These are the men which have turned the world upside down. They are here what also? That is revolution. Turning upside what? Down. That is in Acts chapter 17 verse 6. The mandate that God gave Jeremiah was a mandate of revolution. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. He says, see, I have this day set thee over nations and over the kingdom to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, then to do what? To build and do what? And to plant. If we really want revival and revolution, brother and sister, we, we still need some those caterpillar anointing. Bulldozer anointing. The spirit of Elijah. We need revival. And I pray God will lay his hand upon us and make us an instrument of revival for this generation in the name of Jesus. It is not too late. It's not too late. The role, let's look at the role of prayer and fasting. I don't need to define prayer here. I don't need to begin to define fasting. What are the roles of prayer and fasting in bringing about what? Revival and what? Revolution. When you go through the early church, you will see how the revival started. Jesus Christ told the disciples in the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, he said, go ye into the world and preach what? And preach the gospel. Then when you now go to Luke chapter, chapter 40, chapter 29, verse 49, he says, and behold, I send the promise of my father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, that ye may be endued with the power from high. What I'm trying to bring out there, the one that said, go ye, is the one that said, tarry. Are you with me? He said, go ye into the world, and do what? And preach the gospel. That is the great commission. But the one that said, go ye, he said what? Tarry. Tarry ye what? In Jerusalem, there is a place of tarrying. There is a place of waiting. There is a place of seeking the face of God. And they went to Jerusalem. If you look at Acts chapter 1, all of them, 120 of them, they were in one accord, in one place. They were doing what? They were praying. Until Act 2, 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one place, in one accord, and suddenly, the heavens opened. But before the heaven opened, there was the tarrying, the place of prayer, the place of seeking the face of God. If you want revival in our time, we must do it in the ways of old. Brethren, there is no short cause for revival without prayer. It's not done. It's not done. It's not done. Prayer. Prayer is very, very vital. Prayer is very, very vital. And the moment they prayed, power came. And what happened? The church began to grow. Every day was becoming a, 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 a fellowship day because it was a revival time. These are the days when we rush into the church, we rush out. Everybody is looking at his time. We are, we are too in hurry for God to even impart our life. The reason that I, we don't, there's no revival. I pray. God will help us in Jesus' name. We need revival. 
When we are talking about prayer that brings revival, revival prayer are not merely daily personal prayer. It is importunate and persistent prayer. It is a prayer like the prayer of Jacob that say, I will not let thee go except what? Thou bless me. That was this prayer of this woman who went to go and meet her husband. That is the racial. When every day Leah was giving back, giving back. I'm, what is wrong with my womb? Then he now went to go and meet the husband. He said, woman, a man, give me a child or what? I die. And there was a man who turned that prayer to another prayer, John Locke. In his day, he said, God, give me Scotland or I die. I learned the, the queen of Scotland said, he feared nobody. All the army of Europe gathered together. He said, he feared them not, but this man and his prayer. A man of prayer. A man of prayer. It's a prayer which we called a prayer like the prayer of Elijah. He had the sound of abundance of rain, but he still had to pray for the rain to come down. He had the sound. Many of us have had the sound, the promises. But where is the rain? Somebody need to pray the rain to come down. Somebody need to pray the rain. Somebody need to pray. I pray we will not fail this generation in Jesus' name. My fear is that those of us, those of us in this generation, I, 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 I was trying to think what type of faith are we going to deliver to the next generation? What type of faith? Because the philosophy has changed, the thinking has changed. We've turned our member to prayer seeker. Not God seeker. Competition on material things. Not the things of God. Elijah prayed. He prayed the first time he told the servant, go and look at the sky. The boy came and that was, he said, it was clear as everything. He said, go there again. He put his head behind his nails and he was praying. He didn't look up. Until the boy came, he said, I saw a cloud like the hand of a man. He said, that is enough. That is enough. Tell Ahab, get ready. The rain is going to beat you. And the rain came. After three and a half years of dryness, God came. The heavens opened and there was a great rain. I pray the great rain of revival will fall in our midst this season in Jesus' name. That is the prayer of revival. It's a prayer, it's a persistent prayer. It's a prayer with body. burden driven prayer. A passionate prayer. It is a prayer that is motivated and coordinated by the Holy Spirit as he moves the heart of believer. If you read the story in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, when the river was going on and there was persecution, and the disciples said, ah, they need to recharge their battery. Look at Acts chapter 4. If you start reading from verse 25, it says, from, from, from verse 23, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the sheep priest and the hider had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God who has made heaven and earth and the sea. I know that is in them. Who by the mouth of thy servant has said, why did the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of this house stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, against his Christ. They began to pray. They were praying the scriptures. 
they open the book of Psalm and they begin to pray it into their time. And what happened? That we say it got to a time the place where we are, they were praying, shook, was shaking, and the power of God came down and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray, I pray, revival will come in our time. I said, if I will come in our time. I said, if I will come in our time. Hmm. Let's look at types of revival and revolutionary prayer. It's something we know. I will just highlight them. What are the types of prayer that can bring revival? Number one, a heartbroken prayer, a broken heart and a constrite spirit. It's not, it's a prayer that comes out of your heart. The heart that is humble, the heart that is broken down. Many of us are not broken. We are up there. If revival is going to come, it will be God, break me. And remove me. Make me what you want me what to be. That is the prayer of revival. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 57 verse 7. Isaiah 57 verse 7. Upon Fifteen, sorry. Isaiah. For thus said the high and the lofty one that inhabit eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of contrary and humble what spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite what one. That is the prayer. That God can answer and can bring what revival. It must also be a prayer from an humble heart. Humble. Humility is the key. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles 7, 14. It says, If my people which are called by my name, shall I do what? Shall I pray and do what? Humble themselves. Shall I humble themselves and what? And pray. If you want to pray the prayer of revival, it's for a prayer that comes out of a humility. Title two has no relevance when it comes to revival prayer. Position has no relevance. Everybody is on his face to the ground, calling upon God. God, mercy, 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 mercy. And God will have mercy on us. I said, God will have mercy on us. I said, God will have mercy on us. I want us to look at a man who prayed for revival of his own time. That was this man called Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 1. If you start reading from verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard this word that I sat down and wept. And more certain day and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. This was a man. He was walking in the palace. He was the one who served the king wine. But when he heard about the reproach of Jerusalem, it touches his heart. He forgot his title and position. He began to fast. He humbled himself before God. He called upon God that the shame and reproach over Jerusalem may be taken away. It's also a confessing prayer. A confessing prayer. A prayer when we admit and confess our sins before God. Not only, we could have a global revival. We're going to confess not only our sin, the sin of the world. If you go through the Bible, you see men and women that pray for revival. If you go back, if you continue and read this story of Nehemiah, 
If you start reading from verse um, verse 6, he said, Let thy hear now be attentive and thy eyes be open, that thou may hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess the sin of the children of Israel, which we have what? We have seen. Which we what? We have seen. It's not, it was not exhorting himself. If you want revival, we must see ourselves as part of the problem. Part of the problem. We must confess our sin. We must call upon God. Look at this man, also Daniel. Brethren, whatever we are doing as men of God, women of God, there is a reward. Preaching the word of God, don't think that people don't hear. Those who we hear, we hear. And one day, that which God has sent you to do will speak for itself. One of the prophets, I remember you the word pity in quotes in the Bible was Jeremiah. He was preach, he was he was preaching against the tide. The people, what he was saying does not agree with the trend of the time. He was saying that they are going to see what they are going to go into captivity. People are saying we are not going anywhere. He said, this is what the word of God has said. They said, no. But he was not just preaching judgment. He was also preaching to the future that God will revisit this land again. But thank God there was a boy there who had Jeremiah by name Daniel. When captivity came, he was taken to captivity. But one day, he remembered. I believe he remembered what that prophet used to say. 70 years is accomplished unto you. And he knew that 70 years was approaching. You see, I knew by the understanding of the books that 70 years had been appointed. A time for prayer has come. This man put himself together and began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. Prayer of revival. Prayer of revival. Prayer of revival. Prayer of revival. When you look at the book of Daniel chapter, you can read that one in Daniel chapter 9 from verse 3 to 6. Daniel 9. can read from verse 3 to 6. I just want to read verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understand by books the numbers of the year. We are for the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. When he got understanding from the books, he stumbled, maybe he stumbled at the book of Jeremiah. And he said that 70 years had been appointed. We are talking about the time. The time to pray. Are you with me? If you understand God's timing, you will pray the right prayer. Brethren, God told Abraham, that his seed shall go into captivity for 400 years. And at the end of that 400 years, he will take them out of that captivity. You remember? Genesis chapter 15, 13 and 14. But the people of Israel spent 430 years. Why that additional 30 years? <laughs> I pray you will, you will never spend a day longer in captivity. That is why we need to pray at the right time. He began to pray. He sought the face of God. He cried unto God for the redemption of Jerusalem. And God intervened. 
God will intervene in our time. It's also a repentant prayer. Prayer of repentance. Prayer of repentance. Remember the story of Nineveh. When they heard that God is about to destroy the city, they organized fasting and prayer for the whole nation and they cried unto God. The book of Jonah, chapter 3, from verse 3 to 10. It's also a, it's a continuous and persistent prayer. That is the prayer of revival. Consistent and what? And persistent what? Prayer. Look at Daniel again. Daniel chapter 10 from verse 10 to 12. The man set himself to pray and he was praying for good 21 days. Until verse 12, when the angel came and said, Oh God, the first day you started praying, your request was given. I was sent to you. But the prince of what? Pasha, which helped me for 21 days. Thank God that night was still what? Was still praying. The prayer of whoever is a continuous prayer. Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 11, verse 8. Uh, verse 1, Luke 18, verse 1, sorry, Luke 18, verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not what? Not to faint, not to give up. And he gave out the parable of, the, of a widow and a just judge. We need to pray. It's also an intercessory prayer. This is a type of prayer that is absent in the church today. Intercessor. God is looking for intercessor. Intercessor. God, those are the people who can bring down the revival we are talking. He said, I look for a man. I sought for a man that I may not this that may stand between the edge, that I may not destroy the land, but I found none. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. I sought for a man. God is looking for intercessor. God is looking for Abraham that will stood with God on behalf of Zodom and Gomorrah. And say, God, if you can have 50 there, will you still destroy it? Oh, God, if you can have 20, will you still destroy it? God, please don't annoy. If you can have 10, will you still destroy it? I believe in the heart of the heart of Abraham, he was thinking about Lot and his family. God is looking for intercessors. Those are the people who can bring revival. Nehemiah stood for the rebuild of the wall of Jerusalem, and God answered his prayer. Moses interceded for the people of God. He said, God, if you are not going to forgive these people, they are saying, remove my name from your book. God said, I will not remove your name from my book. It was a man who can say, God, remove me. We need intercessor. Can somebody say amen? amen? That intercessory prayer, we also, God's glory-centered prayer. God's glory-centered word, prayer. Where are you crying for revival? For yourself? For the offering of the church to increase? For the glory of God. Elisha said, he said, God, say that these people may know that there is only one God in Israel and that I'm doing all these things because of you. Everything for what? For his glory. That is the prayer of revival. God-centered Glory, God, glory centered prayer and Holy Spirit inspire and induce prayer. It's also a violent prayer. Violent prayer. Matthew 11, 12, from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, somebody what? Violent and the violent are what? Are taking it out by force. It's also a warfare prayer. There are some territorial spirits we have to deal with. There are some kingdom, there are some powers prepared that we have to deal with before we can have what? Revival. Prince of Persia must be dislodged. Paul fought with the beast of Ephesus. A 
Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. I want to read it because we don't, we think we don't quote that scripture again in these our days. He said, finally what? My brethren. Be what? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? Of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to do what? To stand against the wise, against the scheme, against the plan of the devil. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood against what? Principalities. And what? Against power. Against rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual what? Wickedness in high places. These are more than witches and wizards. These are more than household enemies we are crying out about. There are principalities and power. There are rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual what? Wickedness. We need to pray against them for us to have revival. And for our prayer to be effective, you need, you need fasting. Jesus Christ told the disciples, after they tried to cast out a demon and they cannot do it, say, oh, Baba, why can't we cast them? Say, this thing, go not what? Except by what? By prayer and what? Fasting. Some of us have experienced what prayer and fasting have done in our lives. We need to employ it to bring down revival. I will read a verse of the scripture that is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. On fasting, you know everything about fasting because I want to spend a few time for us to pray. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 58. Let's read from verse 5 to 7. Isaiah 58, 5 to 7. Is, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for man to afflict his souls? It is to bow down his head as brushes and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Would thou call this a fast? An acceptable day to the Lord? Is it not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of what? Wickedness. To undo the heavy what? Burdens. And to let the oppressed what go free, and that ye break what every yoke. Brethren, it is time for revival. We need to pray it. This is the right time. I want to read the book of Zechariah, chapter, chapter 10, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. He said, ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign. Reign what? In the time of what? If you are praying that rain should fall in plateau at this time around, you may need to pray very well. But if you pray that one maybe in June, God will answer your prayer quickly. Are you with me? Talk about timing. Timing, 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 timing. Ask ye of the Lord, reign in the time of the what? The latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright cloud and give them showers of rain. And to everyone grass in the feed. Can somebody say amen? amen. It is time to pray for revival. And we need a prayer that is not just a casual prayer. And revival begins on a personal note. Are you with me? If you want a global revival, you must first have what? A personal what? Revival. 
And it's that what we need God to do in our life today is to ignite that fire of revival in us once again. When the fire begins to burn, when we have a counter with fire upon the altar, we'll be able to say like Isaiah, when God said, whom shall I send? He said, here am my word sent me. But before that, he had had an encounter with the coal of fire from the altar. What I believe that God will do in our lives in this gathering is to kindle the fire of revival in our hearts. That when we live here, we go with that fire. And anywhere we get to, the fire will begin to kindle. And before we know it, we begin to hear stories, report that something is happening in your own Canada. Can somebody say amen? amen? Brethren, something that basic. God say, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? And pray. And turn from their word wicked ways. Then we now look down from heaven. Forgive their sin and do what? And heal their lands. We are the people of God. We are the one to pray. We are the one to humble ourselves. We are the one to turn from our wicked way. We are the one to confess our sin to God and cry unto God for mercy and if ever we come. Let's rise on our feet everybody. Let's lift our hands to heaven and begin to appreciate the Lord. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's bless his holy name. Let's adore him. Our God is faithful. Our God is wonderful. Our God is excellent. Appreciate the Lord. Appreciate him. Give him glory. 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 Worship the Lord. Bless his holy name. Worship the Lord, 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 worship the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worship. I want us to cry to God, say, Father, we have sinned against you. We and our children will come unto you for mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon your church. Have mercy upon your word. Let's begin to pray. Let's, let's identify with the sin of this time that God will forgive us. That God will have mercy on us. Let's begin to pray. Lord, we have sinned against you. We have seen your altar has been polluted. There are many ab abominable things that have been happening in the church. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. We need your mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Makashake Debo. Rabba Bakase Lebo. We need your mercy. 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 Rabba Bakashe de Bobo. Rema Kasala Baba Baba Baba. Yende Baba Baba Kashe de Bobo. Have mercy, have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. We are going to pray that God will pour upon us the spirit of supplication. The spirit of supplication. The grace of supplication. 
God said in the book of Zechariah, He said, The spirit of grace and of supplication. There's a father, Paul upon us, the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication upon us and your church, Lord Jehovah. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. The spirit of supplication. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Habakkuk said in the book of Habakkuk 3 2, 3, 2 he said, Oh Lord, I have thy speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year, make no in wrath, remember mercy. Listen, the Father, revive your work. Don't let this work die in our hands, oh Lord. Don't let it die in our hands, oh Lord. Don't let this faith die with us, oh Lord. Revive your work. In our time, revive your work. Revive your work. Revive your work. In our time, revive your work. In our time, revive your work. In our time, revive your work. Rabose kele bo 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 bo. Yarabaka se de bo 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 bo. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The last prayer. Say, Father, I want to have a counter with your fire from the altar. Let the fire of revival from this altar touch my heart, touch my heart, touch my heart, touch my heart, touch my fire. Kindle the fire of revival in me, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. The fire of revival. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's lift our two hands to heaven. Lift your two hands to heaven. I want to begin to pray in the spirit unto the heavens. For his power to come down. For his fire to come down. Begin to pray to the heavens. Let the heavens be open, O oh Lord. Let the heavens, 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 O oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come down, O oh Lord. We need your visitation. We need your visitation. In our time, O oh Lord, visit us again. Cry unto God. I need your visitation. Visit us afresh. Visit us again. Are you praying? Visit us again. Visit us afresh. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we come in touch with you. From your altars in heaven, take that cold of fire. Touch us once again in the name of Jesus. Father, kindle the fire of revival in us in the name of Jesus. Remove all those selfish prayers. Self-centered prayers. Give us the prayer of your heart, O oh Lord. Let what burdens you burdens us, O oh Lord. Father, I pray. Don't allow this faith to die in our hand. It will not die in our time. Visit us once again, O oh Lord. 
that your name may be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. For in Jesus' name we pray.